Hey, this is Jacqueline Kramowski with the Herd Book Ag Media giving you your moving iron ag news update as we wrap up this next and final week of March. In our political news this week, the supply chain problems happening throughout uh, United States ports continues to be ongoing. Recently, the Department of Agriculture announced that they are going to add yet another ag commodity specific pop-up port uh, to specifically made to house ag containers and hopefully speed up shipping in the near future. This is done in partnership with the Northwest Seaport Alliance, um, and this site is spans nearly 50 acres, um, pretty close to the Port of Seattle, which is the fourth largest container gateway here in the United States. The Northwest Seaport Alliance reports that they have seen a nearly 30% decline in all of their different ag commodity exports um, during the first half of last year. And of course, there's still the ongoing issue of bulk containers being empty. This partnership that's happening is is in fact in part of the Biden-Harris administration plan um, under their supply chain task force that is going to help the USDA address some of these issues as well as other export related agencies. And while we're on the topic of exports, the demand for beef in particular has been up notably and the export value per head of uh, fed slaughter cattle just went over $500, which marks a new record. Recently, two, uh, 200 members of the House signed a letter to the Biden administration asking that they hold off writing new rules for the Waters of the USA legislation, um, asking that waiting for a crucial Supreme Court case to be decided on before any further moves happen. Now going to our international news. Cargill said in a recent statement they are going to scale back some of their activities happening in Russia, um, and they've also stopped their investments in that company, how, in that country. However, they're also going to still operate what they deem as essential food and animal facilities uh, working there. Now, with all of the recallings and stuff going on, um, agriculture-related ones have been a little bit slower than oil companies, according to agweb.com and other retailers. Um, and this has been kind of follows, is following in trend though with the widespread, nearly universal condemnation of the country. In their statement, Cargill said, food is a basic human right and should never be used as a weapon, unquote. The Packer reported that our exports to Mexico also reached an all-time record in 2021, according to a new USDA report. Me agriculture exports to Mexico totaled $25.5 billion, which is goes up nearly 40% uh, from only $18.3 billion in 2020. These export gains were attributed to grains, dairy products, fresh produce, processed produce, meat, as well as uh, different condiments and related sauces. Up north in Canada, the Canadian Pacific Railway, uh, which covers much of southern Canada and even goes as far south as Kansas City here in the States, um, is having some issues with their labor dispute negotiations. The labor union cites issues with wages, benefits, and pensions, and they've begun their strike across the country with 3,000 engineers, conductors, and uh, rail yard workers all being impacted. Already, farm industry groups have written a letter to uh, the Biden administration requesting that the Canadian government, along with the Biden administration, um, support and help mitigate a strike altogether. This is specifically in reference to the high levels of potash that are exported from Canada, especially it's now Western sanctions against Russia keep piling up, making more, more and more fears that potash will become increasingly unaffordable, um, and if not, maybe even entirely non-importable. Right now, the Canadian government saying that they are going to try to pass legislation that would order some of the striking workers back to the job to their jobs, but and, but the situation is still unresolved. Now, back here at home, our drought conditions in the U.S. Um, may get worse again coming now through the spring and going into the summer, and the pressures that we saw from last year on various water supplies uh, are still there and could be an impact moving into the rest of the growing season. John Deere recently announced they're going to make their equipment diagnostic software publicly accessible. Starting this May, their customer service advisor diagnostic tool is going to be available both to their customers and independent repair shops through the johndeerestore.com and their Deere-specific dealerships. 
They say that this uh, implementation is going to allow more advanced repairs by either the machine, the equipment owners or the certified mechanics. This allows users to directly connect their machines um, to clear fresh codes as well as take diagnostic readings and perform other calibrations that would be otherwise limited. All right, that catches you up for this week. This Ag News update is brought to you by the Herdbook Ag Media, serving all your ag business writing, communication, and media needs. Find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or our company website, the-herdbook.com. Let me know you found out about us here in Moving Iron and get 20% off your first invoice.